The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. Today, we're going to build an electronic dice kit. In the last episode, we learned about integrated circuits, so I chose a kit that has a couple so we can look at what they do and how they work in a circuit. This kit comes with two ICs. One is a CD4046, a phase-locked loop, and the other is a CD4024, which is a binary counter. If we look at the circuit diagram, we can see that the VCO output of IC1 goes into the clock input of IC2. So let's start by looking at IC1, the phase-locked loop, and how it works. A phase-locked loop has three main parts. A phase detector, which doesn't so much as detect phases as it actually finds the difference between them by comparing the phases of two inputs. A VCO, a voltage-controlled oscillator, meaning the frequency of its oscillations are controlled by voltage. And a low-pass loop filter. That basically helps clean up the signal to a nice smooth analog signal that can control the VCO. The phase detector compares the frequency of the reference signal to the signal from the VCO. It finds the difference between the two frequencies, then outputs a proportional voltage. That signal passes through the loop filter, which cleans it up, and supplies a voltage to the VCO, which controls the frequency of its signal. Over time, the frequency of the VCO signal is changed to become more like the reference signal frequency until the signals are matching, and then locked to remain the same. They will remain locked until there is a change in frequency of the reference signal. At this time, the phase detector will again sense a difference in phase and output a proportional voltage. This voltage will control the VCO, causing its frequency to change until the frequencies of the two signals are once again equalized and locked. You may notice that the VCO has a second output, which would be the same frequency as the output that goes to the phase detector. This is pin 4 on IC1. That goes to clock in on IC2. So the IC2 clock signal is whatever signal is generated by the VCO of IC1. If the reference voltage of IC1 changes, that changes the frequency of the VCO, which changes the clock signal of IC2. IC2 gets a changing signal until the phase detector in IC1 evens out the VCO frequency. So if we look at IC2, the binary counter, we see that it gets a clock signal whose frequency sometimes goes all wibbly wobbly. But what does that do? Well, let's look at how a binary counter works. We'll start by talking about how you count in binary. We know digital electronics function in only two states, high or low, ones and zeros. Our math system is base 10, where we have single digits counting one through nine, then we round over getting a second digit at 10. Binary rounds over after one. Base 10 is 10 to the nth power, like this. 10 to the zero power is zero, one digit place. 10 to the first power is 10, the second digit place. 10 to the second power is 100, the third digit place, and so on. Rather than 10 to the nth, binary is 2 to the nth, so each digit place is represented like this, as opposed to this. Let's slowly count to 10 in binary so you can see what it looks like. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. A binary switching signal would be seen as a square wave. For every one, the wave is high, and for every zero, the wave is low. IC2 is a binary counter, so it does just that. It counts in binary. Looking at the logic diagram, you can see markings FF1, FF2, FF3 through 6, and FF7. These are flip-flops. In the IC, the first flip-flop is clocked by an external clock signal and it begins to count. High, low, high, low, one, zero, one, zero, and you get a square wave that looks like this. Each subsequent flip-flop is clocked by the preceding flip-flop, only being triggered when the previous flip-flop is high, so the signal changes half as often. 
the third flip-flop is clocked by the second, again changing only half as often, and the fourth flip-flop clocked by the third, and so on. This type of binary counter is called a ripple counter because of the way the clock pulse ripples its way through the flip-flops. The signal from the first flip-flop is the least significant bit, LSB. The second flip-flop is the second digit in the binary number, and so on. The signals combined count up in binary. The first column is zero, the second column one, third column two, fourth column three, fifth column four, sixth five, seventh six, eighth seven, eight, nine, ten, continuing to count up. The ICNR circuit is a seven-stage ripple counter. It contains seven flip-flops. With each flip-flop counting, we can get seven digits in binary. So whenever the input signal of the phase-locked loop changes, the VCO output signal gradually changes then stabilizes. That signal goes into the binary counter, causing a ripple count. And in the end, the signal gives us an electronic die roll. So let's build our die. All that's left to do is put in the 9 volt battery and test it out. All right, let's try this out. Six! Oh. Try again. Four, not bad, not bad. Two, three, 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 not bad. All right, so we're getting pretty good random numbers. Well, there you have it. I hope you learned a little bit more about ICs. In a future episode, I'm gonna talk about logic gates and I'll explain those flip-flops that were in our binary counter. But what other ICs do you wanna learn about? Is there a project or circuit that you'd like to see me build here on the show that contains ICs? Tell me about your ideas on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning.